folks. Welcome back to Indaba Africa. This is Chris once again. Hello, folks. Welcome back to Chris White Africa here. And it's time for Answer the Question with DRSA's Rob Hutchison and Chris from Chris White Africa. How y'all doing? And I suspect the first question of the day is answer the question, where's Rob? I don't know. Reports coming out of South Africa indicate that there's been an alien abduction and Rob Hutchison was taken in custody by Alpha Centurions earlier this morning. No update on his current condition. No ransom demands yet from the Alpha Centurions regarding Rob Hutchison and what exactly their intent is, what they're looking for. But folks, Rob is not here. No, nah, but seriously, Rob uh, was called away and unexpectedly and unable to come to it. Uh, tonight's uh, answer the question. So my apologies up front. Um, I did not prepare specifically for a news broadcast for today, but I have, do have a few news stories I can talk about and I can answer questions. I know that, um, that uh, boy, what's his name? Um, oh, geez. What, no, anyway, the other day I saw that Roman um, went live and, and had people ask him questions. I haven't done it in a while. What I might do with answer the question now is um, if, if we get a large enough audience here shortly, maybe I'll let people call in. John Jarvis says, hello, infidels. So Rob Hutchison's not here. My apologies for that. Uh, we'll either reschedule or we'll postpone it for a week. I'm not sure which. But uh, for those of you who were here earlier, I hope you had a chance to listen to, or those who didn't catch it, maybe tune into it. Uh, that was uh, Eric Olander on the program with me earlier. That was fantastic. Really enjoyable conversation. Eric, of course, is the founder and managing editor of the China and Africa Project. Pretty uh, interesting site. It does a lot of great work on the issues of China and Africa. And they're rebranding that now to look at the global south, which is pretty interesting. So it was great. Uh, it was an apropos time to have Eric on. I didn't realize that rebranding was taking place. And uh, we had some of the folks who are here now were obviously there for that stream. Thank you for that. It was an unusual time at 8 a.m. my time. So thank you so much for that, folks. I do appreciate tuning in. Anyway, uh, the China-Africa is a compelling and interesting story and one that's uh, – Misunderstood, misreported by many people. So who we got here? Rainier Du Toy, John Jarvis, uh, greeting his fellow infidels. Erica, Wolf K, uh, Jonathan DT, Dion Herba. Dion, how are you doing? How is Hanley doing? I take it after tossing out all the old things in the house, <laughs> going crazy, clean up. Uh, she must be feeling much better. And then uh, Camp Patton Family Compound, welcome to you. Uh, we demand a refund, says Rainier. Well, here's what I suggest. Um, since answer the question is a free program that costs you nothing but your time, it's going to be difficult for me to refund that. I can't give you your time back, but <laughs> right here. Swear I'm DJ in from the Netherlands. Welcome to you again. Hey, Swear I'm, you have a little, uh, the other day with Ron there back and forth, the two Dutch <laughs> folks in there having that conversation. Ron was going off the deep end, wasn't he there, Swear I'm? Don't know what that was all about the other day. I think maybe he had a little little something to drink before he came on the program. Teresa Balvin's here. Hendo's back. Hey, Hendo. And uh, what else? Uh, oh, Erica's saying hi to everybody. Yeah, so again, my apologies that uh, Rob's not here, but Rob was called away. He sent me a message a couple hours ago, but I was live on air, so I missed it and only found it when I was getting ready for the program. Otherwise, I would have uh, shifted very quickly to you know come up with an interesting topic, talk about like teddy bears or you know rugby or something like that. But speaking of which, folks, it's time once again for the HSBC 7 series, this time in Spain. Two weeks in a row, we've got Malaga and then Seville. So this weekend is Malaga 7s. And, of course, the clear favorites on the men's side are none other than the Blitzbach, who are just dominating the Sevens right now, and they are likely to win again unless they choke. So, uh, Paulie says uh, he and Anna Marie and Anarine are watching. Well, thank you for that, Paulie. By the way, folks, um, I did uh, promote that channel. Um, Paulie, uh, if I give you the um, – I'll give you a spanner real quick, Paulie. You don't have to keep it if you don't want to, but if you don't mind – Paulie, really quickly, um, if you don't mind being a moderator, you're welcome to stay there. But um, if you could quickly put the link in for the Centennial Colorado Fire Department, whose channel was maliciously deleted by PooTube and was restored. Um, if you could put that in there so people can go check it out if they want, be happy to share that. So real quick, Paulie, if you want to put that in there, I, I don't have time to go look for it. I had that tab open, but somehow I've lost it with all the tabs I have going here. Oh, excuse me just a second here. 
Um, yeah, I'm uploading videos right now while I transmit onto Rumble and onto Odyssey. So, by the way, um, this is crazy. So, I haven't put a video on BitChute since March 19th of 2021. So, 10 months since I put a video on BitChute. And so, it's funny. Actually, 10 months of the day last night, I went and loaded videos up. My videos that I loaded on BitChute, which are ones that I have already on PooTube, um, rival the views. Now, I have 36 subscribers, 36 subscribers on BitChute. And my video on the um, Ronald McDonald House, which wasn't on YouTube, has 89 views on BitChute. 36 subscribers, 89 views. Now, I wish that with my 5,300 subscribers, I put a video on YouTube that got me 6,000 views. That would be the equivalent of this, but it's not. I uploaded several videos. Now, I still have issues with BitChute. The name is kind of creepy. Some of the people on there are strange. But uh, the videos I uploaded last night include the Common Sense Conservatives from the 12th of January. I got 19 views on that, which is more than I have on Rumble. And uh, I think more than I have on Odyssey for that with 400 and 300 subscribers, respectively. Uh, Linda A. Susuzlo, I even got 20 views for that. My Starlink um, space launch, I got 51 views. Um, then the uh, Ronald McDonald House in Canada, 89 views. The rescue by the LAPD of that downed pilot along the railroad tracks got me 43 views. And then um, I did a video on Joe uh, Biden and, and running around the Constitution, which is on Odyssey and Rumble. And that got 29 views. Well, that may not sound impressive, folks. I mean, I haven't done anything on this channel in a year. 10 months since I put anything on there. And look at that. Bit shoot. And I've got more views on almost every one of these, well, let's see, one, two, three, four. I'll also put the John Lewis on there. Four, five, excuse me, five of the seven videos I posted, I have more views than I have viewers or the subscribers. <laughs> oh, Polly says, now I can take this banner away. Okay, Polly. <laughs> Polly is not up to the task. <laughs> Remove moderator status. You have been demoted. <laughs> Well, I don't use BitChute's app. I use the web browser. So anyway, um, yeah, I don't like the name of it. So BitChute's just kind of a creepy name. Anyway, so how are we doing here? Um, yeah, so <laughs> so give me a second here. I'm, I, I got to be careful with Rumble because when I upload a video on Rumble, if I don't catch it quickly after it uploads, it times out and you lose all the data you upload and you have to reload again and go through the whole process. It's very annoying. So it's at 95% right now, this video. This is Common Sense Conservatives broadcast from last night on WSMN. I'm loading it up on Rumble Odyssey, and then I'll put on BitChute later. So, yeah, just waiting for it, 96%. Oh, thank you for putting Linktree. Uh, they got a great fire channel, really cool channel. It is, Paul. Yeah, it is good. It's, I, I don't know what's wrong with PooTube deleting them, what they did, but it's just typical stuff. Uh, never mind the tracks, just slightly dodgy name. More importantly, it's getting your message out. Yeah, Hendo, if there's some merit to what you're saying there. I mean, with 36 subscribers, that's it on BitChute? Wow. Um, and that many views. That That's impressive, you know? Yeah, that's very impressive. So it kind of reminds me of my TikTok. I only have 210 viewers there, and I've got 1,000 people watching some of my videos, which is cool. All right. What's with the unicorns, Buzzy? Okay. All right. Let me just get the... Hang on a second. Uh, what's going on here? Okay, there we go. All right, good to go. Common Sense Conservatives, upload it. Sorry, folks, just have to do this. I don't want to lose um, a gigabyte of data I just uploaded, you know. All right, it's loading now, and then I go over, and it's also loading an Odyssey, so cool. There you go. It's done on Odyssey. That's cool. Odyssey's really tamped down. You used to get all kinds of um, their, their coin, their cryptocurrency. Now it's nothing. I mean, like, look at how much cryptocurrency I get per month. It used to be like 176 units or 187 or 200. Now it's like four or five. <laughs> it's funny. Anyway, so um, hello, Hanley. Hey, Hanley Heba. There she is. Thank you. Um, wow. I mean, that's two couples on here. That's four of the 30 viewers. <laughs> I mean, my family members are watching. <laughs> I mean, people are actually watching the stream. Wow, what's going on? Is um, is is YouTube losing interest in Chris Wyatt? I mean, wow, we've the last two days we went right off a cliff here with views. Um, is something going on today that I'm unaware of? Usually with Rob, we get a big crowd by now, a good ten minutes into the stream. But Rob's not here, in case you haven't figured that out. So yeah, um, a, a few things to talk about that food, forest, permaculture. If it wasn't for the Wide Family Farm crowd that's uh, streaming in here, um, and my serious hardcore core group of viewers man we'd have like nobody watching the stream so thanks a lot and thanks to the 31 of you uh, who are here wow anyway enough whining about the audience size let's talk about some news here um south african teams returning to rugby this weekend the united rugby championship squads will be back in action this weekend yep 
The Bulls, Lions, Sharks, and Stormers will face another round in local derbies as they play each other. Um, yeah, so um, that's what we'll see from South Africa. I'm not sure which games I'll cover yet. i got a crazy weekend here. But I also want to talk about, once again, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa's his vaccine manure. Total nonsense. New vaccine manufacturing campus is proof that Africa will stand on our own, says President Ramaphosa. You know, now, let me just say this to Cyril Ramaphosa. You've been president of this country for 2018, four years now. And you've had four years to develop an organic domestic vaccine production capability. You already have a domestic pharmaceutical industry, so why aren't you producing vaccines? Why are we relying on others and blaming others for not giving it to you? First off, the majority of vaccines that are produced for a number of illnesses are not used by people in the West. There is no vaccine apartheid. It isn't denied to Africans because the diseases are endemic to Africa, and so we ship the stuff to Africa because that's where the consumer base is. So you're just a race hustler, Sarah Ramposi. You're a sad, pathetic excuse for a human being. Now, my guest earlier, Eric Erlander, doesn't agree with my take on on, um, on Sir Ron Poza, and that's kind of cool. Interesting that people have different views on it. But um, I, I, I'm tired of this guy playing his little games here, trying to divide people by race and ethnicity. So this is what he had to say about uh, this donation. By the way, so Sir Ron Poza says, we're going to develop our own capability. Yeah, with money given to you by someone from abroad, a former South African. Yeah, I love how we're standing our own two feet, financed by foreign nationals. Yeah, the long-standing inequity. This is a sad piece of article. This is written by Tamsin Metlekamp in the Daily Maverick. The long-standing inequities in vaccine development and access have been thrown into sharp relief by the course of the pandemic. The long-standing inequities in vaccine development and access. Okay, okay. What, 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 what development? What entity has prevented African nations, African scientists, African universities, African pharmaceuticals? What has prevented Morocco, Egypt, Tunisia, Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya from developing vaccines? I missed that memo. Oh, wait, 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 here. Oh, here it just came in. Hang on, here it is. Here it is. Yes. This medal, this update fresh from the New World Order. That's right, folks. Fresh from the New World Order. Here we go. You ready for this? This is coming direct from the Meadows in Colorado, where Klaus Schwab, Bill Gates, Colonel Sanders, before he went tits up, and the Gettys and Rothschilds have all met, and they've planned white supremacy. Quickly, someone pointed out that while they're white in appearance, the Rothschilds and Gettys are Jewish and not really considered white. Um, so the Rothschilds and Gettys ask that we not call it white supremacy. We will call it white monopoly capital, however, since they're pink in appearance. This is the plan to dominate the world. We shall use all measures to limit the access to electricity necessary to generate electricity to develop vaccines. We shall send our special operations teams to African countries to destroy their capacity to gather samples, all their beakers, their test tubes, their microscopes. We shall force them to buy vaccines from us. We shall test them on only black Africans because after all, we are the cabal. Give me a freaking break. You still on the puzzle. What a scam artist, man. What a scam artist. Anyway, so this is, um, and this article is sad. This isn't him saying that. This is the art, the article. Tamsin wrote this. Now more than ever, South Africa supports vaccine manufacturing in Africa to ensure that the continent becomes self-sufficient and sheds those colonial chains that previously bound it. Excuse me? Colonial chains? Fine. Die. You don't want MMR? By the way, most of the vaccines that we consume in America aren't manufactured in America. Do you know why? Because our pharmaceutical companies developed them and they made no money from them. So they abandoned them. And they're made in China. We don't make manuf we don't manufacture most of these. There's a global shortage of rabies vaccine has been historically for the past uh, 15 years or so. Why? There's no money in it. You don't make money giving somebody a rabies vaccine. Trust me, I know. It's three injections of this horrible pink looking liquid that's huge, goes into you and it takes you have to do it at intervals. And um, there's no money to be made in it. So only people that produce things at low margin, high volume, like the Chinese, will make any money at all whatsoever off of it. So stop. And by the way, the ANC has been in power in 28 years in South Africa. Why haven't they developed this domestic organic vaccination capability vaccine? Because they're too busy stealing, looting, and profiting from South Africa. 
Now, hmm. Those, in fact, were the words, I guess. This isn't Tamsin's words. That she didn't use quotes. That's weird. Um, she only used quotes for those colonial chains. But then right below it, the next paragraph says, those were the words of President Sarah Ramaphosa. He stood beneath the harsh lights of a vast and yet out, yet to be outfitted facility at the launch of the Nant South Africa Vaccine Manufacturing Campus in Brockengate, Cape Town on Wednesday. This is what Ramaphosa had to say. These are in quotes. Africa should no longer be the last in line to access vaccines against pandemics. Uh, I'm sorry, you not the last in line, dipshit. You were the first in line for the Ebola vaccine. We didn't give Ebola vaccines to Coloradans, to New Yorkers, to Pennsylvanians, to Marylanders, to Floridians. No, we gave the vaccine, which we developed at great expense with hundreds of millions of dollars by Western pharmaceuticals for the benefit of people in Africa. And that's where we gave the vaccine. Did you know there's a vaccine for Ebola, Cyril? You aware of that? I didn't a couple years ago, but apparently there is. Africa should no longer go hat in hand to the Western world, begging and begging for vaccines that they just want to drip off their tables. This is a race hustler. You know, I, I don't want to argue with my guests, but I, if we get him back on, I'm going to share him with this. This is total nonsense, total nonsense, begging cap in hand. That's exactly what Cyril Rompos has done. He's tried to blackmail and green mail the Western world into giving him what he wants. And it's worked. Vaccine apartheid, vaccine apartheid, vaccine apartheid. The United States European Union, $711 million to Aspen Pharmacare. The Pfizer intellectual property given to Aspen Pharmacare. The diagnostic equipment to manufacture the vaccine given to Aspen Pharmacare. Not this week, not last week, not New Year's Day, in August of 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, how many doses of vaccine have been produced by Aspen Pharmacare since they received $711 million? the equipment and the intellectual property, all of which Cyril Rampos was screaming must be released, but had already been released because it's a lion's sack of manure. Erica says the rabies vaccine is terrible. Uh, yeah, I didn't like it, but it didn't really have much of an effect on me. Um, South Africa will never recover from the ANC at this point. Yeah, you might be right. Corrupt communism command cadres are busy taking control here. Yep, I think that's true. Wow, we've really hit a hard limit here. 34 people. Did the Chai Coms tap into my YouTube feed? Wow, what's going on there, man? This is the smallest audience I have had for this hour. Jeez, and it's dropping. Two more people just left since, I don't know, since my original channel two years ago. Wow, 33 people. That's crazy. 18 minutes in, I never have an audience that small. What's going on here? What's going on here? Anyway, um... And anyway, Gardner Josh is there. Food Forest Permaculture. Hanley, I already mentioned. Bob, welcome to Bob. Tell me Goslett. Jonathan DT, maybe people arriving home from work now. Um, yeah, but it would be consistent, Jonathan. Either something's happening today or someone's, something's afoot. One of the two. You don't just go from, we had 93 people in the stream yesterday at this time. 93 people. Now we have 31 and the audience is declining. Wow. Wow. Wolf says, I hope Rob is out buying a new microphone. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Brian Goslin, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Gardner Josh, need to relieve your... What's this? Oh, I'm sorry about that. Okay. And then uh, Shireen Roberts. Hello, Shireen. And Ravani Freibus. They don't care. Who doesn't care, man? Oh. Um, YouTube is being thro it's been throwing uh, what's this been being throwing me off a bit lately ah uh, the only thing the ANC has to offer the world is they survived apartheid yeah that's probably true probably true so um, let me continue on with this story it says um, we won't we should no longer go hat in hand to the western world begging and begging for vaccines they just want to drip off their tables we will stand on our own this we are determined to do and this facility is proof of that really Really? A facility built with money from Dr. Patrick Sun Chong? Yes. Um, NANT South Africa, along with NANT Africa and NANT Botswana, is established in 2021 to participate in a coalition of organizations for the advancement of health in Africa. Their founder, the billionaire scientist and NANT Work CEO, Dr. Patrick Sun Chong, described the launch of the vaccine facility as one of the most momentous moments of his life and a homecoming. He was born in Port Elizabeth and trained in South Africa before becoming an American. 
I have the privilege of being trained as a doctor, obtaining amazing opportunities in the United States, and the idea is to bring it home so we can create self-reliance in our country. Of course, there was no self-reliance for 28 years under the ANC as they destroyed the country and pilfered and looted from it. So, you know, really no credibility here, Cyril Ramaphosa, with your race hustling, and uh, I'm just really sick of it, you know? What have you done for 28 years, Cyril? You an incredibly wealthy person who has handed money. You're a grifter. Yep. You know, I gave Sir Ron Posa a lot of benefit of the doubt when he was deputy president, but he's just a fraud. He's just a fraud. Yep. Anyway, disgraceful. Dog sitting. Okay. All right. What else here? Absence makes a heart go. Oh, Eric is sharing that with Dion. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Okay. So, uh, by the way, folks, uh, we got snow again this morning. It was kind of weird. It started snowing this morning, but not much. Not really much accumulates. The roads are pretty clear. Ah, my rubbish is finally being picked up a day late and a dollar short. Yeah, a day plus after, a day and a half after it was supposed to be picked up, my rubbish is being picked up. We have real problems here uh, locally, folks, because um, companies can't hire work, people to work for them. No one wants to work, and people who do want to work are hard to find or unreliable. And our, our refuse re uh, removal service has been struggling to remove the refuse. And that's not a good sign. The good news is it's wintertime, so if trash sits out there overnight or you know, hours longer, it's not summertime. It's not food rotting and attracting pest and you know insects and things like that so it's all frozen so that's good news we had no electricity all day just came back on oh wow uh shireen uh was it uh, a um load shedding or just a rolling blackout what happened we don't need jabs we just visit a sangoma to throw some bones exactly the sangoma yeah sarah lost me with maracana says erica well, that's fair it's a long time ago Easier to live on handouts. That's true. And easier to call people racist and tell them they owe you money and get away with it, which is what Cyril's doing. By the way, folks, apparently aid is finally reaching Tonga. The water supply ship is awaited to arrive there now. The first emergency supply aircraft reached Tonga today, five days after the earthquake and the tsunami. The Royal New Zealand Air Force C-130 Hercules landed at South Pacific Islands Nation Airport of Fua Amato, International Airport. Yep, um, the ash spoiled much of the archipelago's drinking water. And an Australian Globemaster C-17, which is much larger, also landed with a second Australian aircraft to make the flight later in the evening. The C-17 is a U.S. Um, aircraft. C-17 flight today was made possible thanks to the tireless efforts of Tongan authorities who worked to clear a thick layer of volcanic ash from the runway. New Zealand aircraft was carrying humanitarian aid, disaster relief supplies, including temporary shelters, generators, hygiene and family kits, and communications equipment. Delivery of supplies brought in by both aircraft was contactless to ensure Tonga remains free of the coronavirus. My question is, where is the U.S. Pacific Command? Why is the United States not providing assistance? This is, you know, Joe, Joe, you know, if, if Trump had been president or Bush had been president, president, there would already be troops and ships there from the 7th Fleet. We would already have Marines on the ground. A CB battalion would already be in Tonga if a Republican was president. You doubt me? Just look at the past history. You've got Republican presidents doing exactly that. Tsunami relief in the past in Indonesia and elsewhere. Phuket in Thailand. So where is Joe Biden's relief for Tonga? Five days later, Joe Biden hasn't even mentioned Tonga. It doesn't exist. This is sad and pathetic. These are people that need help. This is a natural disaster, not of their own making. It's not their fault. They didn't, they didn't erupt this volcano. Their ancestors are the ones that plopped their ass down there in Tonga, not them. This is pathetic. New Zealand and Australia are finally in the mix, but of course this is because, as I mentioned, the runway had not been cleared, which has led me to criticize New Zealand's defense force. Why didn't they take pallet loads of communications equipment, first aid equipment, and some rations, not necessarily water, and parachute this stuff into Tonga along with special forces troops who could have dropped in from the C-130 and landed in Tonga and set up a camp and then contact authorities and establish communications since Tonga's communications were out for several days. No one in Tonga could communicate with the world. Uh, that we know of. Perhaps maybe um, you might have had um, some people who were in boats who were offshore might have owned sat phones and able to communicate. But as far as we know, the Tongan government had no way to do it. So this was a very, very short-sighted response, in my view, from New Zealand. And some people criticize me for criticizing New Zealand's defense force. But quite frankly, I'm also criticizing the U.S. defense force. Where is Indo-Pacific Command? Where is the response for Tonga? Five days. I've been patient. I haven't criticized the United States. I've criticized New Zealand once. I'm doing it a second 
time, I'm now criticizing the United States. I'm not criticizing Australia. Their response, um, I'm not going to touch that for now. But um, the United States' response is pathetic. It's abysmal. We have Tongans that live in this country. Trust me, every time I go to the Sevens World Cup, you see them or the Sevens tournaments in Vegas, you see Tongans who come there. Lots of them. So where are we at? Why aren't we helping Tonga? What's going on there? What's the problem? What is the problem? Lee Matthews, killer Donovan Moodley, is up for parole after serving away 15 years of his life sentence. It sounds like a UK life sentence. Wolf has had no water since yesterday. That sucks. A premier live. Oh crap! Hola. Sorry, folks. My root beer overflowed. I wasn't. I wasn't paying attention to it last night on Ronaldo's program. He's like, "What are you doing? Spitting in your in your root beer bottle? No, these things are well carbonated, and you got to be careful, man. What a mess that is." Ooh, good thing I had something to wipe it up here with very quickly. Whew, root beer went all over the place. So you can see the little head on it there still. Look at that. came out of the top. Anyway, so now it's all sticky. And, uh, I've got a napkin here, but the napkin is for my whiteboard. So give me a second here, folks. Sorry about that. It's all right. We don't have an audience of 10,000. We're all friends here. <laughs> you can allow me this little indiscretion here. Sorry about that, folks. Mm, man. My root beer, getting carried away. Got a big head on it. Good quality. Hank's Gourmet Root Beer. Anyway, back to the questions here. A premier live stream on using earthworms and bokasi to be self-sustaining. Okay. All right. Um, what else? Uh, Swarm DJ filing a police report. What happened? Chinese New Zealanders and Australians are trying. The Chinese had some stuff posted on social media, but not much. Yeah, exactly, Ron. Um, and where's the United States? We're an actor in that region. Why are we not there? Uh, in that area, you would expect to see four countries intervene, and three of them have. One hasn't. Maybe a fifth, Japan. But um, yeah, definitely, um, definitely, um, we're not doing things. Pathetic. Don't shake that bottle over your keyboard. No, no, I didn't shake it over my keyboard. <laughs> well, the good news is I've got a backup keyboard uh, just in case this one goes cra in a crapper. But uh, I actually need to clean it, too. It's full of dust. I hate dust. I'm kind of anal retentive about that. I don't like it, touching dirty keyboards. Anyway, um, yeah, so back to um, this Tonga situation. So, the, uh, of course, the, the, the volcano, which I've covered here repeatedly, the Hunga Tonga Hunga Hayapaya volcano erupted with a deafening explosion last Saturday. So, um, causing a tsunami that killed at least three people in Troy Village, including killed two people in Chile, two fishermen and knocked out communications uh, for the entire country of about 105,000 people. So the first of New Zealand's Navy ships, two Navy ships arrived uh, today as well, according to their high commission. The second ship with 250,000 liters of water and desalinization equipment, which can produce 70,000 liters of water, was en route to get there. On the west of there was a, there was a moonscape where it was once beautiful resorts and many homes stood. In a radio address, Tonga's King Tupua VI urged courage and hard work for the rebuilding process. Well, don't get too carried away with rebuilding, folks. The volcano is not done. I already had a second eruption. I think we ought to be, um, you know, dealing with emergency services. And when you talk about reconstruction, you might want to reconsider how active that volcano is. I mean, just to have it all destroyed again. So, <laughs> wear a mask. <laughs> Seriously. An Australian ship carrying aid is due to set sail on Friday. Tongans abroad were frantically calling families back home to ensure they're safe. Uh, what else here? Um, why does it say wear a mask? What's that all about? There's nothing here. It says this is a, a subsection of the article. It says wear a mask, but it doesn't talk about wear a mask. Accounts of miraculous escapes are emerging, including that of a 57-year-old being hailed as the real-life Aquaman after recounting how he had swam for 27 hours after being swept away by the tsunami. Wow. Man, that's exhausting. That's incredible. Yep. The uh, volcano was 45, uh, 40 miles, 65 kilometers from Tonga, and the blast was heard in New Zealand, 2,300 kilometers away. Yeah, uh, government's telling people to drink bottled water because the surface water is contaminated. It's acidic. Uh, you, you need to stay away from it, folks. You need to stay away from it. So that's what's going on in Tonga. Pretty crazy stuff, folks. Pretty crazy stuff. Hey, um, former Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, uh, John Ratzenberger, is being um, is it Ratzenberger? I can't remember his name. Something like that. He is uh, Ratzinger. Excuse me, not Ratzenberger. Ratzinger, Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, as he was at the time before he became Pope Benedict, is being accused of um, letting pedos. Um, work in his Archdiocese of Munich between 77 and 82. Boy, they're really going back a long way. It's over 40 years ago. 
or is 40 years ago to 1982. I'm not letting this guy go. Just not letting him go. So anyway, the only pope in recent history, modern history, to leave office while alive. Light rain showed up. Light was confused by all the talk of no power and water. Thought we were talking about Tonga, but it was just a normal day in South Africa. <laughs> indeed, indeed. And now the audience is building. Almost 50. Thank you all for tuning in. Again, folks, if you're expecting to see uh, Rob Hutchison from DRSA here, so was I. So the name of the program is Answer the Question. So let me answer the question. Where's Rob? Abducted by aliens. He's not available tonight, and so he won't be here. We'll either reschedule or just do it on the regular time next week. I'll let you know. I've got a busy weekend, so I'm not sure. Why didn't you use helicopters? Oh, because, Erica, no helicopter can fly that far. A helicopter can fly for two or three hours max before it runs out of fuel. Um, and, you, no, you, you couldn't do that. You, 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 you just can't do it. No, it's, uh, it's too far. What you could do is uh, take a ship that has a helipad on it, which is what New Zealand's doing, and sail the ship there and then fly the helicopter off the ship. Um, but the initial response when New Zealand went in there, they flew C-130, or uh, not a C-130, yeah, you know, it was a C-130. They flew it there to to Tonga uh, from New Zealand, which is a long flight, a few thousand kilometers, as I mentioned, 2,300 kilometers. They should have carried cargo expecting this stuff and dropped people on the ground. That's what they should have done. I mean, you could have dropped, um, you could have put uh, 25 to 50 uh, Kiwi special operators or light infantry in the back of that thing and drop them out of that C-130 with their own rations, communications equipment, first aid equipment, and pallet loads of other stuff, which could have been useful in setting up emergency operations center and reaching Tongan authorities. That's what they should have done. And that, that C-130, uh, if they'd sent a second one, they could have uh, also brought um, vehicles and uh, pallet loaded vehicles and airdrop them. Now that's a dicey operation, but it can be done. With the C-130, it's a lot easier because the C-130 can come down almost to the ground level and fly across the terrain open, and have the ramp in the back and then have the, the, the pallet with, say, a truck or a bulldozer slide off the back ramp, which has, and I'll have a, uh, a parachute and it, it, the parachute blows out. And so instead of it just, you know, falling out and flipping over, it slows it down almost immediately to a complete stop. And that's what they should have done. Now, you couldn't do the pallet loading thing for that, the vehicle stuff, while the airfield runway was covered in ash. It wouldn't have worked. But you could have dropped people into there. So anyway, that's just my thoughts on it. Um, you know, it's piss poor planning if you ask me. Anyway, of course, someone in the New Zealand Defense Force might say, we don't have the capability. We don't have special operators. We don't have parachutes. And we haven't done that. It's too dangerous. They'll be out of contact. We don't put our troops at risk. Yada, yada, yada. I get that. I get that. Lapes, there you go. Lapes, that's what the word I was looking for. Yep. Low altitude parachute entry system. Yep. The point is that five days is a long time. There's a real possibility that people have died because they couldn't get to drinking water in five days. There's a possibility of that. That's crazy. And that's just the initial arrival at the airport. Now they've got air, uh, troops on the ground at the airport, uh, but that's not the entire island. There's 105,000 people there. So what's going on? Pretty crazy stuff, folks. Um, really feel bad for those folks. So, okay, so that's loaded up. I'm just checking my um, rumble. If it's loaded yet, yeah, Common Sense Conservers went up there, and it's also over on... I lost a subscriber on, on, on Odyssey. I'm heartbroken. <laughs> no, a little disappointed, but not heartbroken. Anyway, folks, um, yeah. So, okay, that one's published now. Cool. That one's published. That one's published. That one's published. Uh, still, my tsunami video from last night is not published um, on there. But all the other ones are. All the other ones are. So, I have 36 subscribers on BitChute. And I have 33 views on Follow the Science. The Stooges who say Follow the Science. 48 for the John Lewis one. 19 for Common Sense Conservatives last week. 20 for Linda Way Sisu's. 51 for SpaceX. 89 for the Ronald McDonald House, 44 the L.A. Cops Rescue, and 33 for Stop the Lies. Start with Manchurian Cadaver himself. Yeah, um, wow, that's on BitChute. I think I'll put some effort into BitChute if it actually gets it. Hey, Dominique, welcome to you. And uh, Hollywood's better timing disaster management than people who run these defense forces. Exactly, exactly. Uh, no disagreement there. Did he tell you he wouldn't come in or is he unreachable? No, he's reachable, swear him, DJ. Uh, we're in contact. He sent me a message about two hours before the program. And, uh, in fact, I'll tell you, um, I'll read you what he said. Um, he said he has a major conflict with our show tonight, unplanned, and, and he's got he's to go to it. So that comes first. Um, 
And then I said that it was at 9.09, so just under two hours before the show aired. But I was on the air with Eric Olander at the time. And so I said, sorry, I was on the air. Not a problem. Get back with me later with an update. And he said, he'll do it. And then he said, apologies. I said, no need to apologize. I said, not a problem. I said, however, your pay packet will reflect the deduction for ducking out on work. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. No, he's uh, he's all right, but um, he's got a meeting, which is critical. Um, so, anyway, um, happy to have him do that. Oh, here we go. Tammy... Thank you, Tammy. Three months. Statue of Liberty, thank you for being a subscriber. This is just because I can. Well, thank you for that. Using your 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 free milestone super chat, do that. John Jarvis, okay, so Uncle Joe has been told to go out and saber rattle regarding Ukraine. There appears to be little appetite for this event from other NATO countries, so what's the plan? John, okay. Uh, John, you've got a background in the same sort of thing I've got uh, to some degree. Um what you ask is a very good question. It's also a very fair question. But let me ask this rhetorical question. Do you really think there's actually a plan? Do you really think Joe has any idea what the heck he's doing? Do you really think that he can put together a cogent strategic concept? No, not likely. His deepest concerns about Ukraine are, if you don't fire the prosecutor, you won't get the billion dollars. That's Joe Biden. Yeah, um... Other NATO members aren't interested. Why? I mean, Germany gets most of its natural gas from Russia. It's highly dependent on it, particularly since it foolishly decommissioned its nuclear power plants in a foolhardy move to move to renewable energy. And now the cost of energy in Germany is the highest on the planet. German companies cannot afford to pay for electricity. They're offshoring production because of that and regulation. It's crazy. And the overpaid workforce in Germany. So... Yeah, um, the Germans obviously don't want to antagonize the Russians, but they're not alone. Other countries are in the same boat in Western Europe. Uh, Brett says, how about Japan, Germany's battle, or at Tsingtao? What about it, Brett? Actually, the, the conflict in, in Asia and China in the First World War was fascinating. But so was the Russo-Japanese War in 1905. That was a fascinating conflict, too. Uh, and then the Japanese invasion of Manchuria in 1931, which really is the start of the Second World War. Yeah, no, um, that's an interesting topic. What else? Any books in World War One that you recommend? Uh, yeah, Brett, but n I don't have any titles. Or anything comes to mind. Uh, the The African Kaiser is not bad. That's the one about Paul Leto von Vorbeck. I think you might have gotten that one already. Um, that's a good book. I've got others. Um, the Guns of August, I can recommend that from Barbara Tuckman. Barbara Tuckman was an author and she was not an academic and she was roundly criticized by the snot-nosed elite academics who said, they look down their nose at her, she's, she's not, she's not a historian, Pfft, who is this? She wrote one of the most amazing books on the history of the First World War, absolutely. Uh, if you want to read non, if you want to read fiction, um, All Quiet on the Western Front by Eric Remarque, the, Fran uh, the German author with a French name, uh, that's worth looking at. The heck is that? Somebody just sent me something. <laughs> no idea what that's supposed to be. It's a second here. I'm opening something up here. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Okay, yeah, sorry. Someone sent me something. They're trying to be funny. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Joe doesn't have an alliance plan with the Ukraine. He will do nothing if Ukraine is invaded. Exactly. Same as Obama. Exactly right. Uh, Bat's friends are flying in, three flying in here three months and flying out there six months, watching the weather closer this year. Okay, um, yeah, well, cool. Well, now we've already lost those fifty. Went down down to forty three people. God bless. Were you guys angry that Rob is not here? Fifty two to forty two. We lost ten people. Must have popped in for a second. Hey, before you go, tell us why you're going. Be sure to smash the like button, folks. We're desperate for attention here. We really do appreciate. It. And thank you for sharing the link tree. Erica, let me just take a look at the link tree and see what's going on there. Um, our biggest day was a couple days ago when I really pimped it the first day out. I think we're up to 30 subscribers now, and today is kind of abysmal, just six views. So uh, I don't know. Has anyone gotten an update from the link tree? I don't know how they get the updates or what the updates are. I'm just trying to figure it out so people tell me if they got it or not, and then uh, I'll know what it does update. Anyway, I did sign up for the China Africa Project and paid for the annual fee so I can bring you the news articles that they have, which are pretty good. So um, let me see the news feed here real quick. China African trade in 2021 amounted to 254 billion, breaking an all-time record. I that's 
Yeah, but not by much. Um, it's pretty close to the top mount. Wow. Hmm. Anyway. So, I wish NATO would go to war against Turkey instead of Russia. Oh, Jonathan, NATO um, would have a hard time doing that. Turkey is a member of NATO. Why would Turkey go to war with a member? That's counterproductive. The whole alliance would fall apart. It's a member of NATO. That's going to be a problem. Well, Brett's back to work. Thanks for popping on your break. The National Collegiate Athletic Association is changing its transgender athlete participation policy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. The uh, policy is put uh, because of this um, Penn State swimmer um, who's just lapping everybody, a male uh, competing as a female, uh, Leah Thomas. Um, the NCAA's transgender policy is in the spotlight now. Uh, I don't, their policy, I don't get it. The new approach to allowing transgender athletes will follow a sport-by-sport model adopted by the U.S. International Olympic Committees. Yeah. Hmm. We are steadfast in our support of transgender student-athletes and fostering the fairness across college sports, said John Jaguia of Georgetown University's president and the NCAA's, NCAA's board chairman. New policies effect immediately. Well, you're not cognizant of fairness if you're allowing genetically male athletes to compete in female sports, denying records and titles and scholarships for genetic females. Hmm. Anyway, NCAA, you didn't fix anything here. Meanwhile, Solidarity has launched a legal challenge against the University of the Free State over its planned mandatory jab policy for staff and students. Uh, Solidarity said it also plans to file several other court cases regarding mandatory jabs in the workplace. Uh, according to Solidarity, its first case against the small enterprise employers of South Africa, CISA, will be heard by the labor court on the 27th of January. So I need to get in touch with my connections there at um, Solidarity and Afroform, see if we can't talk about those things. At the moment, the South African labor market is faced with huge uncertainty regarding whether employers may compel their employees or even universities their students to get vaccinated. Yep, dozens of employers are exploiting the uncertainty and using it as an excuse to lay off employees without following correct procedures and contract law. There you go. Solidarity said it received more than 300 inquiries from its members regarding the legality of mandatory jabs. So Solidarity standing up for its employees. Well done. Meanwhile, Sir Ramaphosa is pushing his lie about vaccine apartheid. Who are you going to follow? Yeah, pretty easy. Pretty easy decision there. By the way, folks, in case anybody's curious, um, the total number of schools in South Africa are estimated at 26,000 with 400,000 teachers and 13 million learners. That's a lot. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. Anyway, that's what's going on in South Africa. Yeah. So where are we at here? Back over here. Um, NATO isn't supposed to go to war against anyone. NATO is supposed to be neutral. Uh, yes, but NATO's role has expanded with its participation in Afghanistan. Uh, hoodwinking the uh, NATO alliance to go into Afghanistan uh, was um, was how they expanded their writ. So they do. They also attacked Libya. They intervened in Libya. So NATO has done that. We don't see the clips on Matt Walsh smoking some non-binary activists. Did not see that, Dominique. Um, John Sylvia just logged in. Are the EFF still requesting info from restaurants? No, uh, John, they, they did it yesterday and they backed off of it. I haven't had a chance to record a video on that. Uh, I'll try to do that later, but I've still got to get things set. I haven't set up the stream for Monday with uh, Vian Tutoy. I've got to get that set up. I've also got to determine my plan for next Wednesday, in which I'll attend a press conference for Old Glory DC, the rugby team, to start the season. Yeah, so I got a lot going on. Uh, plus, I haven't been able to collect my mail in some time, so lots of stuff to do. But yeah, uh, the EFF has not followed up with that. But um, interesting article by Johnny Steinberg. Um, it was in, it's not in News 24. It's um, in Business Day, I think it is somewhere like that. But anyway, Johnny Steinberg, the, the known uh, fiction and crime writer in South Africa, wrote an article in which he uh, equated um, white supremacists with black nationalists. He's putting, you know, um, racist and nationalists in the same boat. I have a problem with that fundamentally. Now, I couldn't read the whole article, so maybe Johnny Steinberg said something different, and I've never had a problem with what he's written for the most part in the past that I've read. But being a nationalist is not even remotely the same as being a racist. And a racist is not exclusively white. So that's the first problem I have with it. Anybody can be a racist, and there are people of all stripes who are racist. As far as being a nationalist, being a nationalist is not a bad thing. And that's that's how it came across to me from the couple paragraphs that were in front of the paywall. 
that Johnny Steinberg Johnny Steinberg wrote is that, that being a nationalist is a bad thing. It's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. There's nothing wrong with loving your nation, with supporting your nation, with putting your nation's needs and wants and desires ahead of other nations. That's nothing wrong with that. It's not racist. It's not bigoted. It's not morally bankrupt. It is perfectly fine. What, however, is wrong, and that's where he's going with this, is when you have people like Joyce Malema who claim to be nationalist, but they're really just bigots and racist, and what they're doing is using the cloak of nationalism to be xenophobic. Now, I don't want criminal alien invaders in my country. They have violated the norms of my country, and they're criminals. They have no right to be here. That does not make me xenophobic. If I was opposed to any foreign nationals being in this country, that would make me xenophobic. I don't have a problem with foreign nationals. We like tourists. We like scientists and academics and business people to come here and participate. We, we, we actually like getting the best and brightest from the world to come here and join the team, be Americans. Whether they be from Pakistan or South Africa or Senegal or Lithuania, hey, I'm all for it. Legal, legitimate people who follow the rules and contribute, not leeches who invade our country, undermine the social integrity of our country, refuse to learn our language, and contrary to what the leftists want to tell you, this is not a bilingual country. It is a singular language country, English, which wasn't even our language. We adopted it from our colonial masters. So stop your nonsense, and that's not xenophobic. It's not bigotry. It's not racist. There's nothing wrong with being proud of who you are and promoting who you are. If you're Welsh, fleshing, you want to speak Welsh, you can. You want to promote the language, you want to be proud, you want to fly that dragon flag, the green and white and red dragon flag, you should be allowed to do it. It's not bigoted. It's not xenophobic. Now, if on the other hand, if you live in Cardiff and you go beat up foreign nationals because they think, you think they're taking their jobs, then that's a problem. <laughs> Heard a theory from a Catholic priest that the church was infiltrated by molesters not just to have access to victims, but to liberty destroy the church. Um, yeah, the problem with that story, Light Rain, is there's so many of them that that's a pretty concerted effort on a global level. There are so many of them who are involved in that stuff. Right, Nick? That's not xenophobic. It's patriotic. And there's a conflation of these two things. And when, when you start talking about racism and and nationalism and, and saying they're equal or the same, you've, you've kind of lost the plot and you're misleading people. Anyway, yep, yep. Check out Foley Arms and Hog on Facebook. These guys are hilarious. No idea who either one of those people are. Thank you, Beth. Hussein Bolt will be the fastest female sprinter soon. <laughs> there you go. Well, he can come back and get Olympic titles now that he's past it as a male. <laughs> that's funny that's funny thank you for sharing that wolf k <laughs> you guys are too funny man oh my goodness oh my goodness that is just too funny that's rich anyway so <laughs> oh my goodness my goodness my goodness my goodness anyway <laughs> oh wow so Anyway, um, you know, rugby is really getting back up. It's time now, folks. The HSBC series is back in the swing of things. And we also see the Major League Rugby season kicking off. I'll have a preview of that next Thursday with Dolan Stanford. He'll be on the program. We'll be talking about a Major League Rugby preview for the 2022 season, which begins that weekend. Um, so that's coming up. We also have Curry Cup, which is underway. Wow, what strange results from Curry Cup yesterday. The Pumas obliterated the Lions. Uh, was it was 40 or 50 to 9 or something. It was crazy. The Lions were, didn't even show up for the game. By the same token, the Bulls were destroying the Stormers. It was it was like 40 to nothing late in the game. And somehow they got 21 points. They must have scored three quick tries. And they lost 40 to 21 or something like that. And then the other one was the Sharks and Greek was. The Greek was nearly pulled it out at uh, Kings Park. Growth Point, they, it's not Kings Park now, they're renaming it, but um, they're not Growth Point, something else. But anyway, um, that uh, game was 24 to 23. Greek was pipped at the post, nearly won. But the Sharks pull it off. So there you have it. That's the start of the season. Fascinating stuff in Curry Cup. Fascinating stuff. Dodgy rugby. Yeah, well, the URC is kind of dodgy. And we see the South African teams back in the swing of things this week. And I'll try to cover as many games as I can. Also, I'm going to have on the program Jeremy York, 
who is from the Atlanta area, if I'm not mistaken. He's a, a rugby enthusiast who covers rugby and um, appeared with me in some of the press conferences for Rugby ATL last year. That's the Atlanta team. So I asked him if he wanted to come on and let's talk about Rugby ATL in the upcoming season. We're probably going to do that Saturday. I just got to work it around all the games. So that'll be pretty cool. Jonathan's saying Blue Bulls, go Bulls. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, I'm not a Blue Bulls fan, although I pulled from them at times. Uh, I'm more of a Western Province fan, so that's first and foremost what's on my mind. You know, um, there are some crazy things happening in the world, folks. Did you see this? This is from Canadian television, uh, Quebecois in Quebec. Um, Ezra Levant from Rebel News shared this, and um, this is frightening. This is... This is pretty crazy stuff. Um, I don't know. Should I share it again? I'm not going to show it. I don't want to get in trouble. So I just I don't want to push my luck with that. I've shown it once. Um, but it, what it is is these these kids are brainwashed. They're like the Hitler youth. They're in a television show speaking Quebecois, uh, Canadian French. And this woman is urging them on. So, so um, what should we do to people who don't have the jab? And the little boy's like, you should call the police. Yes, call the police. And his mother's like, yes, I've trained them well nod her head so then the announcer says the, the, the host says well talks to the girl who's a little bit older looks suspicious like Greta Doomberg very suspicious like Greta and says well what should we do well these people they're they're spreading things and they're harming people and they we should just you know take everything away from them little by little until they're forced to do it wow Sieg Heil Hitler youth Sieg Heil Rasa did not have a good oh which game did he call Oh, I didn't see it, Nick, because uh, that game was uh, on when I was broadcasting. So I'll have to go back and watch it. Wow. So Rasta Rastavinga cost them the game is what you're saying. I'd be angry because I'm a big fan of Rasta. He does a really good job usually. So, wow, the Greek was with a suspicious dangerous tackle call. Yeah, these 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 dangerous tackles, and these, these not wrapping the arms around and stuff like that, some of these things are pretty lame. I mean, when a player dips into you and you're called for a high tackle and you're already in the process of leaning forward and tackling somebody, that's not just. It's not just. Wolf case is $2,000 for your effort. What, Zim dollars? What Zim? There's no super chats in this show. I've seen zero super chats. So what dollars are those? Yeah, so let me just take a look. Let me get you guys up down the metrics on the channel just so you know because uh, I do share that with folks uh, quite frequently. Not xenophobic, I agree. Okay, I already read that. Um, so on the channel... Analytics. Let's take a look at here. So we are approaching 400,000 views uh, over a lifetime. 399,300 hours. So we should reach that by the weekend. You know, we should be able to get there by the weekend. Uh, hit 400,000 views. So cool. Actually, 700 views. We should get there today. That's not hours. 700 views. Yeah, we should be able to get there by today, hopefully. So uh, 700 more views. So tomorrow, hopefully, I can announce that the new channel has had 400,000 views. Now, contrast that this channel started April 18th. So um, it's nine months yesterday. Nine months yesterday, this channel was nine months old. The old channel, which was 17 years old, but the, the real point from 18 February last year until it was canceled on 18 April of 2021. So but when the real effort really started in May, so April, May. So from May 1st, on to um, on to April when it was canceled. That was uh, 11 months, and in that 11 months, the channel got 2.5 million views, and uh, had um, I think 300,000 hours of content, or 350,000 half a million hours of content viewed. So 400,000 views in almost the same amount of time, and 84,000 hours watched is a far cry from the old days but hey that's where we're at and we're just trying to keep it going so the um teens jordan uh, is still getting a few views here and there it's up to nine thousand five hundred. so maybe if people keep watching the continuing weeks maybe by a month or so we might get to ten thousand on that but yeah so um but um yeah anyway so there you have it that's those videos uh my comment was flagged in real time by youtube i mentioned a former governor of new york I had to resign. Yeah, uh, probably Lachlan. I appreciate that you recognize that it wasn't me or my moderators, but it was actually YouTube that does that. Uh, I didn't see it, so let me go back over here and see if I can see if uh, if I can even see it. No, I can't even see your comment because I never saw it. YouTube took it. Yeah, yeah, that's just harassment on the channel. That's just pure harassment. I, I've seen that a lot. Um, in the book 1984, the kids would report any rule breakers to police, even their own families. Exactly, Jonathan, and that's what's happening now. Stitches. Snitches, snitches get stitches is what's going on here. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty scary. Yeah, 
uh, fly to Mexico, walk across the border, Biden will give you $40,000. Yeah, just come on in that way. That's what the Biden administration is encouraging people to do is just come on in that way through the back door. The question was from Matthew, but I agree about walking across the border. Unfortunately, I'm sure there's a pigment check. Only brown and black waved in. <laughs> Actually, no. Um, we've had a number of people illegally come in through the southern border that are not people of color, so-called color people. Um, yeah. It's dangerous, though. I mean, our southern border is almost all desert, you know, or semi-desert, um, high desert chaparral. And it's not like there's water sources or water points you can rely on. So you, you just got to be prepared for it. That's why people die out there. Um, it's pretty dangerous. But I don't recommend it, number one, because I don't like criminal alien invaders. Questions about General Flynn. Um, no, no, you can ask me questions about General Flynn. Erica, go ahead. I'm happy to answer them. Hendo just shared my Gitter link. Um, Gitter is not quite up to 100. We've got 94 subscribers on there. Yep, Parler is still my largest of those Twitter-like uh, social media platforms with 375. Yep, and then uh, my Twitter account um, has 306, I think it is. Not many. Like I say, Twitter's a cancer. I don't really use it for much other than get some videos and check in on some things. Some breaking news. Um, there's a building on fire. You can only save two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I gotta say that. It's a picture of Juju and uh, and uh, Fikine Mabula and Malula, Mabula, Cyril Ramaphosa and Kozizami Dawazina, Becca Chile, Jacob Zuma, and the other guy I don't know. You can. <laughs> they've got. They've got some spaghetti sauce here and a tempo bar. There's a building on fire. You can only save two. Which two would you save? The tempo bar <laughs> and the and the spaghetti sauce. That's funny. That's funny. Someone has that my Twitter. So on my profile on Twitter, I have 307. Oh, somebody went over there. 307 on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's Sky. What is Sky got going on? I bet you I don't make this window. Let's see. Sky. Um, what is she doing here? She's got uh, all kinds of stuff here. Um, well, I'm not in there. There's Dumadenga, and there's uh, Ronaldo, and um, a whole bunch of other people. But I didn't make the cut. Oh, there's 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 Rob Hutchison. Yeah, I'm not in there. Interesting. Well, cool. Guess I'm not important. <laughs> ah. Huh. What does it say? It doesn't have anything to it. Let me see. Cool. I'm going to tell him I didn't make the cut. Cool. <laughs> so I'm responding on Twitter. So Sticks and Hexenhammer says, if Trump mispronounced a single word and we saw half a dozen legacy media articles questioning his sanity, Biden stops working more than Windows 95 and nobody shrugs. <laughs> Sticks and Hugs and Hammer says Biden stops working more than Windows 95 and nobody even shrugs. Oh, dear God. I got to open up this window. We got we to gotta watch this. Oh, man. That's uh, <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, hang on a second. Let me see if I get the right look here. <laughs> Firefox. There we go. Okay, let's let's do this. Here's Biden. So this is Sticks and Hugs and Hammer's uh, his, his one. So let's see what Biden has to say here. What that could school reopenings or closures become a potent midterm issue for Republicans to win back the suburbs? Oh, I think it could be, but I hope in God that they're, uh, that, look. <laughs> for those of you who tuned in for that last night, that was two hours of agony for me. I was knackered by the time I finished my radio show last night, and then I went on someone else's radio show for or, 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 or YouTube program last night for the Wide Family Farm. I was completely wiped out. I mean, two hours to listen to Sleepy Joe yesterday. I, 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 today, Junior. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Erica's messages are retracted. Why did she retract her messages? Anyway, maybe I'm kidding myself. But as time goes on, you get more demented. The voter who is just trying to figure out, as I said, how to take care of their family, put three squares on the table, stay safe. Be 
three squares. Dude, I want three meals, not three squares. I don't want to eat circles. I don't want to eat rectangles. I don't want to eat, I don't want to eat band instruments. I want to eat three square meals, not three squares. This, three squares. this is not the 1930s there at Lunch Pail Joe. Uh, Biden was a pain last night. Does anyone listen to his sentences? He's, he's all over the place. He loses his train of thought and makes no sense. None whatsoever. Absolutely ludicrous. This guy actually is, is, is even our president. It's just too much. Um, yeah. So anyway, Joe. And that one, that came in from uh, Sticks and Hacks and Hammer. <laughs> yep. That's funny. White House now in damage control mode after Biden explicitly stated that he would not respect the outcome of the 2022 election unless his bills were passed. Hmm. YouTube and team at YouTube and Twitter should remove his access to print disinformation. <laughs> Sticks and Hacks and Hammer is having a blast. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I did, did he say that? I must have missed that. I was half asleep watching this nonsense. Oh my goodness. Biden was unbelievable. ANC suspends uh, MP who challenged Ramaphosa over the 2017. Mervyn Dirks was suspended. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> Yikes. What's this? <laughs> what the hell is this? Oh, this is weird. Okay, check this out. Now, I've reported on the murder of Brianna Kupfer. And, of course, I reported on the hypocrisy of the news, which if it had been a white suspect and the victim was black, we would have heard white man kills, white man rapes, white man murders, whatever it is. That's what it was story been. But the media, of course, runs. With, and this is fine if they were consistent and do this all the time, but they're not. The same media sources will do exactly the opposite when it's flipped the script. But they don't say black man. They say man, suspect, man, suspect. So, um Someone, uh, New York Post put the article in there and it says LAPD identifies suspect in the stabbing of UCLA grad student Brianna Kufer. Okay. Now, I don't know if someone's, no, it's not someone being facetious um, because of the username. So watch this. You are going to just be gobsmacked by the stupidity of this post. This is on Twitter. So actually, I should do this. Let's do this. We had this. I created this thing a long time ago. Twitter news. Here you go. Tweets from that platform. This is what we're doing today instead of answer the question. Tweets from that platform. News from the Twitter sphere. That's what we're doing today. Notice those are viral particles. <laughs> They're not raspberries. Those are viral particles, folks, in an electron microscope. All right. Tweets from that platform. Well, let's go to that platform and take a look at what I'm talking about specifically here. This is pretty creepy. So uh, this is posted by Sky and PragerU. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson originally posted. New York put this post, New York Post, the newspaper, put the, it's a conservative newspaper, put this in Twitter. LAPD identifies suspect in stabbing of UCLA grad student Brianna Kupfer. Now, there's a picture of Brianna, the lovely young lady left, the lunatic accused murder on the right, and then I guess the flowers in front of the shop where she worked at in the bottom there. Below that, Someone named Devin ETH at Black Lives First said, please delete this post. Please delete this and post without his photo. We don't want racist comments. Black Lives Matter. Racist comments, his picture's a racist comment, or, or, or are they just making the false assumption that there will be racist comments because he's black? Of course, I'm sure this jackass if it was reversed and that was a white man and a black girl murdered would say the most vile racist things pretty much guarantee it. You know, it's just people on Twitter are just, that's why I don't do this very often. Yep. Okay. Ooh, Vanna cook. Yeah. Back in the tank. This one's from Vanna cook. Cool beans. Nothing like being back in the tank. The shark tank, Vanna cook, who's, all of his sevens kit was robbed from a storage facility in Cape Town recently, and we still haven't heard any updates on that. But there's Werner Kalk against the Greek was carrying the ball. For the Sharks in those ugly jerseys. Ugh, that white band in the center. Not my kind of thing. Don't like them. Anyway, yep. Huh. What else we got here? Dan Crenshaw. Conscious Caracal. What's he got to say? The closest most people come to reading Jonathan Jansen's pieces are when they click on them by accident. Jonathan Jansen, don't be fooled. This is why every form wants the matrix results printed. White schools dominate the top end, paving the way for public displays of domination. 
<laughs> oh my god, the race hustlers. I don't know who this Jonathan Jansen is. Let's see if I can find this guy. Yeah, here you go. This is what he posted. Uh, what a clown. White schools dominate the top end, paving the way for public displays of domination and playing into the DBE's hands. <laughs> Excuse me. What are white schools? Does that mean that schools in KZN are black? Schools in the Eastern Cape are black? They're predominantly populated by those sorts of students, but that doesn't make them black schools. It makes them public schools. Are private schools white schools, even though they're full of people of color? Yeah, but that's just race hustling of the highest order. I haven't seen that. That looks like it must have been in um, the Times. Anyway, um, yeah, Conscious Caracal uh, shared that, so I'm going to retweet it. <laughs> Someone shared this one. That's funny. Um, yeah. White privilege card trumps everything. Scott free birth, Scott free death. Yeah. Yeah. That's real funny. Um, that's both of them. The official race card and the white privilege card. <laughs> Silly. Yeah. But people actually, um, put that stuff out there and people believe it. That's the pretty scary thing here. So why is this not coming back there? There we go. Okay. So, Hmm. Oh, did you all see the uh, the video I showed? Um, I shared in the group. Some of you did. This is really look. Let's let's do something that's heartwarming, okay? Let's just do something heartwarming. Uh, I thought I did this already. Hang on a second. No, I didn't. Okay, I'm going to do it. Okay, I I, I put this in. Uh, I added it on on the uh, one of the groups, so the WhatsApp group, and then the, something else. But um, okay, let me find this real quick. This is very heartwarming, folks. This is a wonderful video. These are. The, these wildlife control officer apparently, it's, or maybe it's a cop, I can't tell, but it looks like wildlife control is taking a, a, a pet carrier, it looks like a little dog, chihuahua, or a cat carrier, and brings a bunch of orphan ducklings and drops them into the pond. And um, a duck sees them, swims over, and adopts them instantaneously. This is just absolutely heartwarming. Let's get this up here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah, she's basically saying, follow me. Come with me, baby. Oh, that bigger. is precious. Hers look bigger. They lost their mom and now they got a new mom. They got a whole family. Oh. Oh, what a wonderful mom. Oh. Look at them all. I have never seen nothing like that in my life. How cool is that? I mean, the duck doesn't go, oh, they're not mine. Oh, I want to abort them. Oh, they're someone else's children. I'm not going to raise those ducklings. Oh, some of them are brown. Some of them are white. Some of them are black. Nope. A female duck sees a bunch of ducklings in distress in the water, comes with maternal instinct to them, swims up to them, basically says, follow me, guys. I got you covered. That was so cool. Uh, I'm not wearing a smart jersey. Uh, what's that? I, I'm just wearing a um, a um, a sweater. Yeah, I pull over. Yeah. Yeah, just a sweater. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Nice to see something nice for a change, you know, instead of talking about all the bad things. But that's pretty cool. Um, this one's pretty cool, too. Let me show you. That's why I want to do this because I saw this. This is a um, – what is this? Hang on a second. Oh, I know why I'm saying it, because Dr. Interracial liked it, and I follow Dr. Interracial. So somebody saved a deer that was hit. Watch this. This is pretty cool, too. Um, give me a second here. Yeah, that's cool. I love working at Crow and releasing animals back in the wild. Well, here's someone trying to rescue a deer that apparently was struck. So let's take a look at this and see this one. This is this is pretty cool stuff here. What is that? That deer would have starved to death out there on the lake if it hadn't been for that. Stuck deer in a frozen lake. Wow, that's really cool. Deserves endless retweets. I agree. 9,700 retweets and 33,000 people love it. That's that's just awesome. Yeah, hooves don't work too well on ice. That's right. <laughs> that's very sweet. Uh, I thought it was hit by a car. It wasn't hit by a car, so just stuck on the lake. Um, yeah, must have wandered out there and then slid and tried to get up and slid. Next thing you know, it was way out there in the lake and would have starved to death because it couldn't get out and just given up. It was really cool how the deer didn't fight because he, he's like, I think the deer realized not much I can do or this guy's not trying to hurt me. <laughs> Wolf says, oh, dear me. <laughs> That's funny. That's really funny. Anyway, yeah, so 
But that's more from the Twitter sphere. So Biden frees up and loses train of thought multiple times in a matter of two minutes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Biden's like last night's like, uh, you want me all to stay longer? I'll stay longer. <laughs> you know, in the back chat sack is going, no, abort, abort, quick, Secret Service, get him off the stage. <laughs> you can't go for 20 more minutes, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, Life News says that every Democrat in Congress gets an F on right to life, except one. Wonder Life. Wonderful, says Rick Heron. Good to see you there. Hmm. <laughs> uh, so, Jansen, um, it is in the Times. Let me, have, let me see if I can find that. Uh, so, his name is uh, Jonathan Jansen. Okay, Jonathan Jansen, Janssen, uh, Times. There you go, Times Live. Let's see if I can find it if it's behind a paywall. Uh, don't, this is why. Okay, let's see if he's got it. This is from 20, yesterday, 23 hours ago. Please don't be behind a paywall. It's behind a paywall. Well, let me just read the start of it here, okay? I'll bring it up for you guys. We'll read the start of it. So, Jonathan Jansen, don't be fooled. Okay, uh, there's a lot going on in education this week, but let me focus on an absurdity. The most ridiculous thing we can do right now is have dis- anguished debates about whether the media should be allowed to present the grade 12 National Senior Certificate, NSC, or matric in the old language. Results in print. How did this become an issue when there are schools without running water, electricity, and flush toilets? Well, on that point, Jonathan Jansen, I agree with you 100%. And how is it that the ANC is still not provided textbooks to 87% of the schools in the Eastern Cape? Over 4,500 schools have yet to receive their textbooks, despite the fact that students, learners are already in their second week of classes or other learning materials. So that's a fair question, Jonathan Jansen. We don't disagree on that point. When many schools are reopening without basic RONA mitigations in place, such as PPE equipment, when thousands of children are still not placed in schools in provinces where frustrated parents keep kept officials hostage, huh? Distress over published results is like debating the appropriate wallpaper colors in the dining room of the Titanic as the distressed ship is taking on water. Actually, no, Jonathan Jansen. Um, ignoring problems doesn't make them go away. If these people think that these results should be published and they have a legitimate reason for it, there's no reason for them not to put it. Do you think people are not capable of attacking multiple issues simultaneously? I know the ANC is not capable of it, but civil society is certainly capable of it. I mean, right now, we should have the 7th Fleet and rescue ships, maybe even a hospital ship in Tonga. And aircraft landing there, bringing supplies in by the hour, helping the Tongan government reestablish uh, governance there and helping people in need. That should be happening right now. But while that's happening, we can also simultaneously be addressing issues back here in the States. And the list goes on and on. So I don't agree with you on that point there, Jonathan Jansen. Who cares? AFRI Forum does, and I'll tell you why. The printed results accompanied by victorious smiling faces of children with seven to nine distinctions is the last remaining public display of white domination. Excuse me. <laughs> so this ass wipe race hustler, Jonathan Jansen, thinks that publishing the results is some success. Now, think about what he just said. First off, it's factually wrong. If you look at the report I showed yesterday, there were three students shown. Two were white, one was black. So should that black student who got distinctions in five subjects not be heralded as being successful? It's the bigotry of low expectations and it's the purview of race hustlers. Race hustlers who think that smiling faces for having great marks in school is something that apparently only whites can achieve. This is the hallmark of a racist. This is the language of a racist. This is the behavior of a racist. Let's go back to Jonathan Jansen's article. The printed results accompanied by victorious smiling faces of children with seven to nine distinctions is the last remaining public display of white domination. True, there are some black faces here and there, but by and large, it is white Afrikaans schools which dominate the upper ends of the annual results report. Now, why is that? Why is that, Jonathan Jansen? Why aren't public schools in KZN at the top of that? Why aren't Zulu-speaking students carrying the higher percentage? Why is it an oppressed minority is the one doing it when a privileged majority is subjected to Bantu education by the ruling party? That should be your question, Jonathan Jansen. Not denigrating an oppressed minority. Most of the world looks down on countries that abuse their minorities, but not South Africa. It's just the same old, same old. You can be a racist and a bigot against the minority in South Africa because 
long time ago on a planet nearby, there was a white minority government that oppressed black Africans and therefore into perpetuity, whites and their offspring are evil and must be discriminated against and marginalized, criminalized and pushed to the corners of the earth. Denied grants by the government, the very government they used to pay taxes to. Having lost everything except economic power, the matrix results are not simply a reminder that owns is not here, but that we are still on top, at least when it comes to social and academic status. Wow. Wow. Racist much there, buddy? Racist much? Wow. Wow. First off, whites in South Africa didn't lose jack squat, dipshit. There are so many dipshits out there in the political sphere right now. Jonathan Jansen, they didn't lose anything. The National Party gave up. They didn't lose. They weren't defeated. Your implication, they were defeated. Defeated by what? Illiterate South Africans? They were defeated by illiterate South Africans in Angola? Give me a break. Give me a break. Dion says they only print the exam numbers. I don't care what they print. This is a race-hustling piece of nonsense. And I'm glad that uh, Conscious Caracol exposed that. I didn't see that. Hmm. A new Marist poll shows 61% of Americans want to make uh, abortion illegal or overturn Roe versus Wade. Okay, so here you go. Um, so he had a problem with showing stuff. This one's from Nicole Graham. She was the the candidate for mayor of uh, of Itequini, right, uh, Durban, and uh, Bernaldo's um, former flame, Bianca von Vike. They retweeted this. Uh, they liked it, I should say. St. John's College, Takudu Twanje Sitole achieved an 89.4 average and eight distinctions, including dramatic arts, English history, Isulu, Fao, Lo, maths, and physical science, as well as AP maths. He's also to be commended on 100% maths result. That's impressive, 100% maths. Eight distinctions. But um, Jonathan Janssen thinks that this is the face of white domination and white supremacy. Yeah, uh, St. John's a world-class Christian African school situated in Houghton, Johannesburg, upholding the values of compassion, integrity, responsibility, humility, and service. And apparently, um, people at St. John's must speak English. I don't see any mention of Afrikaans here, you race hustling slime ball. Congratulations to Taku de Chuan Neshe. Yep. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So well done on his part, but not to the race hustlers. So give Bianca von Weick credit. Of course, she doesn't do the same thing for white students. You notice that? You notice that? So let me ask this. I'm not going to pick on Bianca, but but go to her Twitter feed. Let's see if she also, maybe she did. I, I don't, I, I don't want to say she did because I might not know. Let's be fair. But let's see if she actually also, um, let's just do this. I'm going to find it. So if she also does this thing for white students, uh, let's see. Um, no, 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 well, she did it for another black student. Here you go. Here's another face of white domination. Um, our top student, Sazi Bongwe, achieved an average of 95.9 with nine distinctions. Well, that is a real face of white domination there. Yep. So that's two black students. Um, Yeah. So it doesn't tell us what his grades were and the other, the other one did. That's from St. John's. So that's uh, Bianca's promoting that and congratulating them. And she's right to do that. She's right to do that. But um, I don't see any white students being promoted. So where's this white domination there, Janssen? Nothing. 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 Hmm. Anyway, yeah, so there you go. There's that. So, wow. Anyway, so what else we got here? Ah, Linda Way Susuzlu. <laughs> Retracted her hostile comments after meeting with Ramaphosa. So she's been spanked. Wow, she's been spanked. I didn't know that. That's interesting. So she's been spanked four minutes ago. Oh, this just came. Is that right? Four minutes ago? Wow, this just came out, folks. Breaking news. And I found on Twitter, as, as, as uh, Ronaldo likes to promote, 
So, Justin Sususlu retracts unsubstantiated hurtful comments in judiciary after meeting with Ramaphosa. Wow, Tourism Minister Lindaway Sususlu's retracted her hostile comments about the judiciary after meeting with President Ramaphosa this week. It emerged on Thursday. The president specifically admonished the minister about her attack on the judiciary when she said today in the highest level, yada, yada, anyway. Sususlu could see that her words were inappropriate, retracted her statement, and affirmed her support for the judiciary. I accept that my column was leveled against the judiciary and African judges in particular, unsubstantiated, gratuitous, and deeply hurtful comments. But of course... There's no mention of her apology for her racism against white South Africans and against other people like myself around the world. Her racist comments were insulting and demeaning, but no apology for that. She apologized because she was about to be sacked. Ramaphosa had just caused to sack her and wouldn't have got much pushback on it. The RET couldn't have saved her. So Lindue Sasuzlu has apologized for offending black justices, but not for her racist comments. Yep. Sometimes they get caught in frozen water and have to put their nose out of the water to breathe, but they don't die. It just looks crazy. Oh, you're talking about deer. As a person of European heritage, I'm upset displays success by groups with a statistically higher intelligence than mine. <laughs> Why is Afrikaans a race language but not English? They're both white languages. Okay, Afrikaans is not a white language, Jonathan. It's an African language of Dutch origin, but very much African and uh, Malay and Indonesian and Khoi and San influence. Um, English is a European language, not a white language, but I get your point. Get your point. Yeah. Well, because they hate Afrikaners, they're bigots and racists and that's what it is. So this just in, it just happened. Wow. Meanwhile, the St. Andrews college, Walter Polo coach was found to have groomed boys. That's pretty creepy stuff there. Pretty creepy stuff. Right. Um, anyway, what else we got here? So what's that? <laughs> What the heck is that? I don't even, those are words I don't know in Afrikaans. Wow, that's crazy. Anyway, yeah, so that's a little bit from the Twitter sphere, folks. Wow. What else we got here? Anything I want to talk about here? I'm um, just looking to see. Oh. Democrats fall flat with the Latinx language. Yep, exactly. Latinos are offended by it. Hmm. What's this from? I don't know what this is. House Republicans have a border, so. What else we got here? I'm just trying to find something else. My pitch, if you. That's from Bart, so I can't play that. Ha, huh. Diane Bongino. The EFF is serious about the unity of this continent because it is a threat to Europe and America. They do not want Africa united because United Africa will be protected. It's minerals. <laughs> you moron. <laughs> Your minerals, you're going to sell them and people are going to buy them. <laughs> united against... This, 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 is, this is just bigotry and stupidity. Here's Julius Malema looking for attention. Are serious about the unity of this continent. Why? It's a threat to Europe and America. They Racist, bigot, commentary, threat to America. Listen, dipshit, you're not a threat to America. You're a threat to common sense and unity in South Africa. What a moron. We don't want Africa united because Africa united will protect its minerals. Actually, no, Africa has never been united and it's not been united because Africans don't want to be united. First off, this fool doesn't see Africa for what Africa is. He sees Africa and he sees Bantu peoples, black skinned peoples speaking from the Nguni language family and the Bantu family. That's not Africa. That's part of Africa. It's a big part of Africa. But Africa is full of Ethiopians, Somalis, Eritreans, Arabs, Berbers, Indians, white Africans, mixed race Africans. So his vision, if you want to call it that, is nothing but hatred. Let's go back to Juju, the hater in chief. By the way, um, I love the social distancing. I also love the mask wearing. By the way, you notice the only people wearing masks are the police. The only people wearing masks are the police. Well, there's a couple people in the back who are wearing masks, I should say. 
But the vast majority of these people are not wearing masks. Not wearing masks. Interesting. From TRC as Africans, cell phones all over the world will be produced in Africa. Because ah, 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 ah. cell phones from all over the world will be produced in Africa in your wet dreams. Inefficient, ineffective, useless labor force, corruption, theft, hostile climatic conditions, broken infrastructure, out of the way, not on any path for anything, abysmal levels of education. Most people in Africa receive an education, simply learn rote memorization. They're not taught to think, to think critically, to communicate, to create. Stop the nonsense. Stop the nonsense. Utter nonsense. Africa is highly uncompetitive in every single industry it's involved in, including the ones it dominates. People who grow coffee elsewhere do it far more effectively, far more efficiently, and far more profitably than they do in Ethiopia or Uganda or Rwanda or anywhere like Kenya where they produce coffee in Africa. Fact of the matter. Fact of the matter. Also, Africa had a far bigger head start with the Germans and putting massive amounts of infrastructure into German Southwest Africa, into Cameroon, into Togoland, into Tanganyika. All gone. All destroyed. In fact, the ferry crossing the lake is the same damn boat that the Germans used in the First World War. Yeah. A hundred years later, the same ferry taking people across the lake is that one. Tanzania has been independent since 1960, 64, 64, I think it is. 57 years, and they can't buy a single freaking ferry to ferry people across or create a ferry service. Africa creates virtually nothing except chaos and offspring. Now, whoa, Chris, you're pretty harsh on Africa. No, I love Africa. It's a fascinating place with lots of people, lots of potential, and a lot of success stories. Amazing authors, scientists, agronomists, rulers, lots of amazing people. But don't sugarcoat things and also don't race pander and play the game of Julius Malema, which is just a hater in chief. A mineral to produce such is in DRC. The people of DRC need the people of South Africa and Ghana and everywhere to come together to fight imperialism and chase out imperialism in DRC. Chase out imperialism in the DRC. You are delusional. The DRC is the way the DRC is because of Congolese. They're the ones who are exploiting it. They're the ones who invited Zimbabwe, Namibia, Angola, and several other countries to invade their own country and allow them to strip coltan, gold, and many other things out of the Democratic Republic of Congo. They are the ones who allow these militaries like the ZDF to self-finance their campaign of conquest in support of Kabila back in the day. Stop it, Juju. You know, every time you open that big, big freaking fly-catching orifice you call a mouth, you spew more nonsense than the size of the Congo River at its entrance to the Atlantic Ocean. Gavin Comer, welcome back. Long time no see. Anyway, yeah, it's probably not the first time that he's spanked Linda Way. <laughs> and use our minerals for the benefit of the African continent. Um, okay, moron, your minerals are used for the benefit of the African continent. That's right, because they're sold to the Chinese who make the shitty phones that they send to Africa, which you can afford to buy. That's for the benefit of Africans. The people that sell the minerals, they go to China. And then the people that sell the phones in Africa. And if you didn't have South Africans who were so lazy who could not go to work, you might be able to make the phones in South Africa, Juju. illegal immigrants. They beat them up, push them out. These colonial clerks have never said anything. You know why? It's black on black. But when a black man confronts a white man, this guy is violating South African law with those comments. He should be arrested right there. There are cops standing there watching him violate the law. 
Now, I don't recommend arresting him on the stage because that'll just cause a riot. Once he's off stage, put the bracelets on his chubby uh, wrist. He's violating South African law with hate speech right there. Hate speech. Hate speech. But that's juju. Anyway, folks. Wow, I have to download that one so I can have a little bit of fun with that. Wow, that's from the EFF. That's that's their own tweet. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, my goodness. So I'm not going to read this. I'm not going to say it because I don't want to be attacked. But um, uh, Angie Mocheka has announced a 2021 National Senior Certificate overall pass rate with the progressed learners included. Whatever the hell that means, progressed learners, is at 76.4%. Well, if you think that was bad, um, this is uh, from a FOIA request. A Freedom of Information Act documents reveal that something caused an avalanche of miscarriage in stillborn babies. Let me see what they mean by an avalanche before I show that to you. Yeah. Hmm. So... Anyway, um, yeah, I don't want to get in trouble for this because you can't report the truth. But anyway, this is um, this is a report that a site called uh, LifeSite News is reporting that they claim they got a Freedom of Information Act and that they found out that a certain thing causes um, a bunch of miscarriages to stillborn children. Hmm. This is information that was hidden in an effort to cover this data up. That much I know because we had to get a court to tell them they had to do it. Netflix reality TV star Maya Z- Vander told her fans last week that she delivered a stillborn baby at 38 weeks on December 9th. Huh. Beverly Hills real estate agent stars on the show Selling Sunset. Hmm. Anyway. Yep. Trying to hide the data for 75 years, 55, 75 years. Crazy stuff. Yep. All right. Um, Good night uh, there, Lynn. Uh, Let me just look at Elon Musk. Why don't they promote good stories? The head boy of St. John's uh, will be packing his bags for the U.S. except to study at Harvard. Uh, Well, I talked about that. I mean, were you not here? I talked about Sazi Bongwe and also talked about the other student there at at St. John's. I talked about both those stories earlier. Yep. All right. Juju. Yeah, exactly. All right. Um, yeah, so we're doing all right. 68 likes here. Well, one away from Ronaldo's favorite number. Be sure to smash the like button, folks. I'm going to take a break and uh, I'll debate about Night Owls. I'll probably do a Night Owls later on today. already done two streams, but if I don't, I'll let you know. Thanks a lot. I've yet to do a video about Malema's nonsense. He just keeps adding more nonsense to the mix. So we can just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> he's, he's, he's opening his mouth again. And once again, feces comes pouring out of it every time he opens it. Anyway, folks, thanks a lot. Be sure to smash the like button. Please go back and watch my live stream with Eric Olander the managing editor for the China Africa Project, you'll be really pleased that you watched it. If you haven't seen it, please go back and watch it. That was my stream from earlier. It, it's, it's worth watching. I think you'll really enjoy it and you'll probably learn a few things about it. So check it out. And that's it. Uh, if I recall correctly, progress students are students who have been pushed over the next grade. Oh, okay. So they, they're, they're failed students. Okay. Who, 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 who they, they have to repeat a year. Gotcha. That's what I, that progressed. I love that progressed. No, they're, they're failures. <laughs> they're repeat students. Okay. All right. Cheers, everybody. Just for Juju. The race card, free ride for life, play it for unfair advantage, personally, professionally, and politically. Julius Malema, honorary card-carrying member. Race card, a tool of the intellectually weak and lazy when they cannot counter a logical argument or factual data. Please hand Juju his complimentary race card. <laughs>